What's up everyone, John from ARTV. July 2018 is a thing of the past now, so it's time to play a little bit of catch up. Now, this is something that I am not going to do every month. I do these occasionally, and if you've been watching the channel for a while, then you know that. So don't think this is gonna be a recurring segment, but I just wanted to do it this month because there weren't that many album releases. August will probably be different, and obviously the fall is normally a time that is stuffed Full of new albums, but today I'm covering Young Blood, Amy Shark, Denzel Curry, and much more. So please drop a like on the video, stay tuned, and check the description if you want to see favorites, album info, and everything like that. Other than that, we're gonna get started with Young Blood. Young Blood is an artist from the UK, and his debut album is titled 21st Century Liability. He sounds a lot more interesting on paper than he actually is, and I think it's unfortunate that I got my introduction to him with the track Tin Pan Boy, which is easily his best song, fusing together elements of rap, rock, a little bit of, I don't know, other stuff that just felt kind of like a cool connection between the different worlds of music. That song didn't make the cut for the album for whatever reason, even though some of his older songs like I Love You Marry Me and Polygraph Eyes did, but that's not for me to say and decide as to why that didn't happen. Anyways, I do love Tin Pan Boy, and I liked a couple of the other songs that I heard, so I decided to check out this album and was actually kind of excited to, but this album is plagued with a myriad of issues, a lot of them being with Youngblood's vocal approach, the way that he tries to fuse everything from synthesizers, electronics, hip-hop, trap-rattling beats on some of these tracks like, say, Machine Gun, Fuck the NRA, for example, and then mixes that together with some kind of try hard lyrical content that does have good intentions. I do feel that he has good intentions to talk about mental health, other political issues, social issues, and it's not enough, sadly, to save this album. It's something that is very boring to listen to because the production is often very flawed and very flat. The way that he comes across on these tracks often just doesn't give him the vibrato or the presence that he needs to to sell these songs. And as a result, this is a very forgettable album. It's unfortunate because he does clearly have talent, he has potential. In fact, I overheard part of his set at Warp Tour. I didn't actually get to go to it because there were so many bands and artists that I was trying to see that day, and he was playing at the same time as somebody else. And uh, he sounded like he was kind of like a good performer from what I could hear in the distance. And it seems like he's got heart and passion and that's great. He's still very young and could definitely do bigger things in the future. And I think he will. But for right now, I don't think that there were that many great tracks here other than some of the already pre-released songs like 21st Century Liability, the closing track, which is the title track. But its placement is very odd considering right before that, we had some slower moments, some more mellow ones. And then you just go out on kind of a rap rock crossover that sounds like it could have come out in the 90s. Not complaining about the sound of that song, just its placement is odd. A scattered track listing, a lot of forgettable tunes, a couple of decent ones. This is definitely something that I feel will fade off of your radar pretty quickly. For me personally, I'm going with a 2.5 on the Youngblood debut album, 21st Century Liability. I genuinely did not have plans to cover the Death Heaven record. One, because I'm not traditionally into a ton of metal, black metal, maybe some post-metal, but for whatever reason, I guess I just never really looked into this band. I think I had definitely seen Sunbather back in 2013 taking over a lot of people's year-end lists, and I meant to check it out, but I never circled back around. But I truly could not have predicted what happened when I finally sat down to listen to Ordinary Corrupt Human Love. This is a fantastic, cinematic, post-metal album that is a very endearing and engaging listen. From those deathly growls that come from the lead singer, reminiscent of black metal, death metal, other technical death metal, and other metal subgenres. From those and the way that they fuse that together with a little bit of a lighter, inspirational, uplifting instrumental at times, it seems like hope and hopelessness kind of fighting each other in the best way, playing out right in front of your eyes and ears. And as I, for the first time, heard Canary Yellow, my mind was blown. That track is fucking flawless. One of the best damn songs of the year. And if you're not listening to it, you're missing out. And I feel so sorry for you if you don't give it a chance just because 
it's metal because it's longer because of whatever. I'm so glad that I opened my ears and my heart and my eyes to this because it's amazing. There's so many layers to this. The guitars, the way that the pummeling double bass drums just thrash through this song and the vocals that linger in places but also make room for these vast instrumentals and just the a wide array of instrumentation that's used here. A fantastic cut from a record that has a whole lot more of that up its sleeve. I went back and checked out the rest of the band's discography too, and I have been sleeping on these guys, and I'm so sorry for that. Sunbather is absolutely ace, probably my favorite record along with Ordinary Corrupt Human Love from them. All the way on this new one from the opening track, which just feels absolutely fantastic. I love the way that they draw us in with You Without In. Moving into Honeycomb, another crushing track that just has such an allure to it. Just a dark, mysterious vibe with a little bit of light, like I said. All the way from those opening cuts, Canary Yellow. A couple of ones that I'm not as into. I do feel like Glint drags on a little bit. And then Night People just feels a little bit out of place, even though I do like the fact that it feels cinematic and dark in a different way. And then to that amazing closer with those clean guitars that pop up, cycle, and get stuck in your head on Worthless Animal. This album is absolutely worth your time, and this is getting a strong 4 out of 5 from me. Could even be upgraded to a 4.5 at some point, but I'm going to stick with a 4 for now. Next up, we have Amy Shark, a singer-songwriter from the Gold Coast of Australia, and her debut album, Love Monster. I had a surprising amount of requests for this, and I hadn't previously heard of her, but I was kind of intrigued after I saw a collaboration with Mark Hoppus and also production credits from Joel Little, best known for probably working with Lord, and the same goes for Jack Antonoff for working with both Lord and St. Vincent and of course Taylor Swift. So I had kind of high hopes going into this, and I had a lot of viewers telling me that this was a fantastic effort. And honestly, it didn't hit me on the first few listens. It was something that I kind of had to settle into. And then I played the record at night while driving back home from a concert, and it started to strike a little bit more. And I guess probably three or four listens deep, it started to really hit me that a lot of these tracks do connect on a deeply personal and emotional level. She puts herself out there, and these songs are very raw, and I think that they're often enjoyable because of that. I do feel like this album has its flaws and its problems though. Some of the songs feel a little bit too familiar to other artists and other types of songs. In fact, sometimes I would say that she often feels like the female version of Vance Joy, who is also from Australia. I don't think that that's necessarily fair to say about all of her material, but sometimes it definitely hits a little bit too close to home. Something that really got under my skin and bothered me is how much All Loved Up, one of the singles that is produced by Jank Antonoff's sounds so much like something from 1989, the album by Taylor Swift. It literally feels like Jack wrote it with Taylor, took it, lifted it, and then copy and pasted the melody because everything from the vocal approach here, it doesn't necessarily feel like Amy Shark very much. And just the production techniques that are used and the way that he has her do her voice a little bit grittier and more emotional and tense as it leads into the chorus and then it rolls through and it just literally sounds like a cut from 1989. I'm not interested. However, I did start to get a true enjoyment out of some of these tracks like I Got You, I Said Hi, which were both released as singles, I believe. We also have the collaboration with Blink-182's Mark Hoppus on Psycho, which is definitely turning into more of a favorite. I wouldn't call it top tier quality, but still, it's definitely better and different compared to a lot of the other features that Mark Hoppus has done in recent times. And then we've got some truly emotional tracks where you can feel that the stakes are raised and are much higher, like Middle of the Night, for example, Don't Turn Around, and The Idiot. All of those are extremely well written, and Middle of the Night in particular is super engaging and just a little bit quirky with its instrumentation, very catchy, snappy, gets stuck in your head with the electro pop production. And then The Idiot is pretty straightforward in terms of what it's saying lyrically, and that's what brings it to life for me and makes it interesting. Overall, this album definitely has its moments. It also has its flaws, but overall, I would say it's worth checking out. And for me, for the debut album, Love Monster by Amy Shark, I'm gonna have to say 3.5 out of five. The band Wet are now a duo, and they had a brand new album drop in July. It's titled Still Run, and it's their sophomore effort. 
previously a trio and having a pretty strong debut album with hit songs like Don't Wanna Be Your Girl and several other moments that truly did stir and sink in with me. I feel like on this new one, they just kind of wanted to shed off the skin of what they built up the first time around. And this thing feels like more of like a lounge pop alternative effort that just kind of floats by. It doesn't often really do all that much to push any buttons, whether that be for the good or for the bad. It just kind of exists. And that sucks because I wanted to like this thing. I really did enjoy their debut album. And I feel like this one just floats by and cruises along. It's not that they didn't try. The lyrics are often quite poetic and do feel like they sting and have some passion there. And I remember feeling very excited and confident that their album would be solid after hearing There's a Reason, which is just a sweet love jam, an alternative rock song that is very, very breezy, but also a lot of fun and just puts a smile on your face. I really connected to it, and honestly, it is one of my favorites of the year. But after that, there really wasn't all that much that really did anything for me. So unfortunately, this new album from Wet, even though it is just fine, you can listen to it, and it sounds okay, it's well enough produced, although in places I do feel like they could have used some spicing up, the album just kind of exists. And for me, I'm gonna have to say a very light three for Still Run the Sophomore Effort by Wet. I'm very excited to talk about this next artist. This is rapper Denzel Curry and his new album, Taboo. This is his third overall studio album, and it's his first since 2016. He had an EP that dropped last year, and this is my first real full-length exposure to Denzel. I have to say that I am extremely impressed. I, I feel wowed by this project because I just looked to him and his music and I heard people talking about him and I just kind of made the assumption that it's another SoundCloud rapper. I don't know if I care about this. Do I really want to check this out? But I just kind of walked out on a limb and said, fuck it, I'm going to listen to this album and my jaw dropped a little bit as I played through the entire thing. It's only about 43 minutes, and as you listen through and the three acts and these 12 songs, this record hits hard, man. There are so many tracks that just go there. He has the bars, he has the flow to back up what he's saying, and he touches on everything from suicidal tendencies to molestation and these other dark entities that have bothered him, taken over him, or else just things that he wants to discuss from over the years, and he puts them into these absolute bangers. And this album feels like an album as it flows through its three acts, which are light, gray, and dark. Black Balloon sounds like it was influenced by Kendrick Lamar, something off of Tapempa Butterfly, perhaps, just the way that it feels soulful, but also has a lot of heart, and just a great rapping approach on the tune. And then tracks like Sumo and Clout Cobain are just bangers, fire, that dominate because he is saying something lyrically, but they also just leave a great impression musically. The opening song, which is the title track, Taboo, is fascinating. I love the guitars on it and the way that he's able to mix the skittering beats in with the percussion, the instrumental, the guitars, everything, it all comes together perfectly. And I like the fact that he seems so focused, so honed in on exactly what he's set out to do with this album. And as a result, as things continue, this doesn't just feel like a collection of singles, it actually feels like he has something to say, a purpose, something to dominate, something to conquer, and something to call out. And one of those tracks comes in the form of Perks, which really takes a swing and a shot at all of these SoundCloud trap rappers that are blowing up for no reason because they have no talent. Oh my god, it felt so liberating to hear him crushing these rappers that I absolutely hate. Ones that don't really have a flow, they're just saying whatever, and then he even makes the joke like, oh, they play whatever, they go, hoo, 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 dur, 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 and then everybody says, oh, that was lit, because there is no standard for quality anymore. People consume garbage, and it is absolutely an injustice that this man, Denzel Curry, is not having Hot 100 hits. He's not charting all over the place, that more people outside of like the critic circles aren't talking about him, because he's an absolutely fascinating talent to watch and to listen to. Even in a live setting, I looked up one of his concerts. He did a Chop Suey cover by System of a Down originally, which was awesome, and also just his energy on stage, his presence, and what he has to say 
love it. Perks is fascinating. I love Vengeance as well, which comes right after that, which really dominates and ups his lyrical game. And even The Blackest Balloon and uh, Switch It Up, which is an absolute banger that gets stuck in your head instantly. This is a great album and one that I cannot recommend enough to you guys. Definitely one of my favorite rap albums of the year, perhaps one of my favorite albums overall. I am giving this album by Denzel Curry Taboo a 4.5 out of 5. Please go check it out. Oh, Canada, we've got a great new pop punk album. Another one, I know, another one in the bag from your country. So thank you. Great year for pop punk in general. I'm telling you, just that scene, whether it be pop punk, a little bit of post-hardcore, other bands that just kind of play with that similar sound, they're just having a breakout year. And I am more than okay with that because I definitely felt like the genre has been lacking and just kind of dull the past few years outside of a few releases. Now this new Like Pacific album is titled In Spite of Me and I was hooked after hearing the title track. I first got into them, I suppose, not really into them, but exposed to them because I heard a couple of songs, didn't think that much about it, but then my significant other was in love with them, continues to be, and showed me their music and played it often, so I really had no choice to be, to be exposed to it, and over time it did grow on me, but this new album definitely feels even better, more solid and more confident in what it's doing. It has emotional heights, their singer is fascinating, I love the fact that he can just really strain, stretch his voice to be a little bit rougher, but can also come down and have a cleaner track too. The title track is amazing, Had It Coming is probably my favorite overall, the stop and start vocals and guitars are just so alluring, just a super, super great charm to it overall. And as the track listing continues, there's not many songs that I dislike at all, I don't think I could pinpoint one. Occupy Your Skin is so good, love the guitars there, and also the lyrical content that just seems like it goes a little bit deeper than even many of the other songs do. And then you've got The Spring, which really gets to me because I, I feel like I related to it a long time ago, and I just look back and I'm thinking, I know exactly what this guy is dealing with, but you decided to fuck with my head, he screams on that one. Really great stuff overall. I cannot recommend it more. There's so many good songs here from Admittance to Had It Coming, which I already mentioned, Sedatives, and even the closing track, Something Missing, that still hits pretty hard. This is a really, really good pop punk effort that mixes in uh, other elements of rock and other styles that I think you guys will enjoy if you're into that sort of stuff. For me, this new one is a very strong four out of five. Wrapping things up today, we've got one last band to talk about, and that is a band that might perhaps remind you of Rancid for a very good reason. It's the ska punk band The Interrupters and their new album, Fight the Good Fight. This is an interesting effort from them, my first full-length exposure. I had previously heard some of their tracks because I know that they had toured with bands that I love, like Green Day, for example, Swimmers as well, and I think that this new material is just fine. It's pretty exciting at times. I love the opening track title holder, which is really engaging. The Magnet, She's Kerosene, is a fantastic anthem that I was fortunate enough to see performed live at Warp Tour, and they sounded great. I think that this album definitely suffers at times from the overwhelming rancid influences, which if you've ever listened to that band, it's going to be quite apparent that this band, The Interrupters, is the protege of Tim Armstrong. That's not always a bad thing, but sometimes I feel like they lack distinction. I really like their lead singer, Amy Allen. She'd previously done her own solo stuff, but she's been with The Interrupters since 2011. And I feel like this is one of her best outings vocally. I feel like she's really dominating. And the ska punk vibes are definitely a good time. If you're just looking for a soundtrack to turn down the windows to, cruise around, play in the summer, this is your new summer anthem. Fight the Good Fight is a 3 out of 5. Thanks a lot for tuning in and making it to the end of this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. You don't want to miss out on all of the other music-related content that I do here on this channel. Thank you for tuning in and watching what was probably too long of a video, but still, I wanted to bring this to you because I didn't review a ton of albums. Not that I'm going to continue to try and review tons of albums, but it was just a slow month in July, so this is my way of giving back to you.
will. If you're able to help out with a donation on Patreon, if you're able to help out with a monthly donation on Patreon, it would be greatly appreciated. Tap the top link down below or else the annotation in the corner. It truly helps content like this keep coming on both of my channels. If you want to see another catch-up video of multiple albums and one, then tap here or tap here for another recent review. All of my socials can be found linked in the description along with more info on these albums, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.